Hey folks, we are live at the Hamza hate speech protest, which is currently going on outside Hollywood. And we're going to be here for the next hour or so, however long it takes. I'll be moving around and I will be explaining what's going on. So please do, please do send in your messages. Please do send in your thoughts. Please do send in your comments. And I will do my best to read them out. Just got to watch that I don't fall in. Because we would not want a drowning. In the words of William Wallace, freedom. Well, absolutely. This is what William Wallace would be saying. He would be saying, they'll never take a free. What the <laughs> is going on? Because Hamza says you've had a bit too much to think. Let's change the camera around. Okay. So as you can see, we've got our get hums out Scottish ejection. Of course, for good.uk. Classic banner, that isn't it? That's excellent. And Hamza with his Dazzy look and his slightly Stazzy SNP cap on, and he's deciding what you're going to think and what you're going to say at home and away, including in your own home, because this law is different from any other law, any other speech law that's ever happened in the United Kingdom, in that you can be prosecuted for things in your own home. So if somebody reports you after your birthday party or your meal or your takeaway with friends on a Friday night, and they don't like what you say, they can go to the police and complain about it. And the police are obligated, the police are obligated to investigate what a complete waste of police time. And this is one of the biggest arguments against this bill is it's going to lead to so many frivolous, and vexatious complaints that the police are going to have to be obligated to deal with. Just watch behind yourself as well. Hey. I'm going to walk. Sorry, okay. just watch ships back. I've got one. One more. Somebody putting this out. Police Scotland's hate crime monster is coming for our kids. That's the Scottish Union for Education.
what are they saying in this leaflet? The Hate Crime Act. And when we see that phrase, hate crime, we've got to be able to make a distinction in our own minds between a violent hate crime, such as a, a mugging or something like that, that's aggravated by perhaps racial hatred. We've got to make a distinction between that and hate speech, which is speech that the system deems to be hateful, really. It's a subjective opinion. But the difference between a, a violent crime and hate speech is, is a huge difference. And the people here today are complaining about the hate speech, so-called crime. It says here, the Hate Crime Act is a very serious attack on freedom of speech and freedom of expression. It will extend existing laws to make it possible for just one individual to raise a complaint against another. Under this legislation, if the accuser believes that the accused hater, so-called, said something because he or she hates people with it, con it constitutes a hate incident that must be reported to the police. So they said they are going to kick off in a couple of minutes. Lewis says the biggest argument against this bill is that it's despicable, anti-freedom and anti-humanity. Susie Davis, a hate crime monster, a.k.a. Hamza. Neil says, thank you for your efforts and thank you for your good wishes, Neil. On behalf of everyone, not just the sane and like-minded. Derek says he's watching from Blackpool. <laughs> Daryl Porter says, thanks for covering this for us all. Oh, it's a pleasure. Alan says, brilliant. Lewis says, this move by the Scottish National Party is a sign of their fragile political nature. David Jay says, report Hamza. Well, he could certainly be, and I do believe he is being yeah. reported for his anti-white speech, which most certainly does fall under the category of something that it could be argued is insulting, paired with the probability that it's likely to inc incite hatred. Now the speaker has started. Can people tell me if you can hear the speaker on this microphone? Boy, do we have a line up for you. First of all, my name is David Richardson. I pastor a church in the West End of Glasgow and I'm the deputy chairman of the Scottish Family Party. Great to be here. Great to be here. With so many people who are prepared to stand up and prepared to, to take off the sticker and shout loud. Make people get us the way down to this, to this bill. But then first we do a lot of people to give a very, very warm welcome to a dear friend of all of us. Please, please welcome the Glasgow Cabby. <laughs> Going to go into the crowd. Yeah. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic to see. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's a lonely region, gentlemen. If you're allowed to see that. No. 
And you're crazy. We love, we love now living where people are so easily offended. It's frightening. Um, a lot of spooky people come from various <laughs> groups and some political party. Well, some people just say. I hope you've all the lovely Easter. Of course, we'd like to say a huge thanks to everyone who has made the effort to come along the whole route today. It's fabulous to see so many of you on this unusual April see. Wednesday. Can anybody tell see me if you can the other way back and everybody out there will be able to see what's on uh, these? I'd also like to say a special thank you to Richard Lucas and the Scottish Army Party. We took time out to organise much of this event. Folks, can you hear so any better? Be Sorry, I'm trying to get. Commitments. The last time we came together at home was to demonstrate against the gender of on the 12th of January 2023, just over a year ago. Thankfully, Nicholas Sturgeon resigned. As for Swiss, <laughs> five weeks, five short weeks after our protest against Scott Dobbs' GRR bill. We're gathered here on this unique day to demonstrate against Hamza Yousaf's shambolic and dangerous New Hate Crime Act. This act has now been forced uh, upon us in this country, and oh, the irony of this hateful, spiteful, hate crime law coming into play on April Fool's Day. You can't make this up on the nation's traditional practical joke day, comes a useless and threatens, along with Police Scotland, enforce such a draconian new law, criminalising free speech in this country. It is absolutely disgraceful. <laughs> the Scottish Police Federation have stated that this new law is not fit for purpose. As well as telling, telling anyone We'll listen, it's a recipe for disaster. Hamza, the man who gets away with spitting the word fright, was venom is possibly Scotland's most well known and infamous bigoted racist. We speech in this country, forcing all of us to live in silence and only to do as we're told under his horrid dictatorship. Just as SNP officials and politicians are currently being investigated for stolen, ring fenced, indirect public donations and embezzlement, the Scottish Government are still under police investigation on corporate manslaughter charges under health and safety law. Sorry. This is in relation to COVID deaths in care homes due to the huge scale of blunder speed and the alleged attempts to cover them up. And yet, here we have Hamza stretching police resources to the very limit as he now investigates every single hate crime complaint made in this country. I think we will make some complaints against Hamza useless. This is not truly, absolutely insane. It's also unmanageable and unworkable. Thank you all for listening. I'm now going to pass you on to Stuart Wheaton, an academic. Um, and uh, Stuart will take you with what he has to say. Stuart Wheaton. Hello, uh, my name is Stuart Waiton. I'm the chairperson of the Scottish Union for Education. Hopefully you'll all end up with one of these leaflets that will tell you all about us and what we're trying to do. We set up a year ago with the strap line, education, not indoctrination. One of the first things we did was to produce a pamphlet explaining everything that was wrong about the promotion of transgender ideology in schools, and it is being promoted in schools. Subsequently, we found out that nursery schools were also helping to promote this ideology to three and four-year-old children. 
Will our challenge to the government and the education authorities about their transgender indoctrination now be deemed a hate crime? Perhaps they will now go after J.K. Rowling for her tweets. If they do, we should all shout, I am J.K. Rowling. Retweet what she has said and challenge them to come after all of us. Not much has been said about how the Hate Crime Act will affect children and young people, but schools egged on by councils like Edinburgh Council, for example, are ramping up their demand that hate be reported to the police. As a result, it is highly likely that children will face a visit from the police for calling each other names. You may have heard of the hate reporting hubs. There are 411 of them across Scotland, places where you're encouraged to report hate. Some of these hate hubs are universities. And so we find ourselves in a position where universities that receive anonymous complaints, like the ones against me for being transphobic, apparently, will now be passed to the police. And as a result, hundreds, possibly thousands of staff and students could end up with a record of hate against their name and be blacklisted and face the prospect of being refused employment based on what could be nothing more than a vexatious and utterly false allegation. This is modern progressive Scotland, apparently. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak to you today, and I want to thank Steph, the Glasgow cabbie, as he's known, for organising this. Steph, I don't think he would mind saying, is an ordinary guy, but an ordinary guy who has done extraordinary things. And I think he's an example for all of us, because it's only when people stand up and take themselves seriously and start to organize themselves that we'll have a chance to get rid of this crap. They are trying to force their values onto the rest of us. They're doing it through law and they're doing it through the indoctrination of our children. And if you, we collectively want to do something about it, we've got to organize. Check out the Scottish Union for Education. And hopefully we can all do something extraordinary in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Glasgow Cabby. We will soon be hearing from Rosemary, a profound uh, tweeter and blogger with a female perspective. But first, just let me read a, a short statement from Richard Lucas, the leader of the Scottish Family Party. It was very sad he couldn't be here today. I am very disappointed not to be among this freedom-loving throng today. If Hamza thinks Scotland will just roll over and sacrifice our hard-won freedom, he's in for a shot. Thanks for raising your voice today. Have a great day and go to bed knowing that you have struck a blow. Thank you, Richard. A warm welcome, please, for Rosemary Cameron. Hello there. Right. I've been to a few funerals in my time, but I never expected to be going to a funeral for free speech. In Scotland, home of the Enlightenment, in Edinburgh, the Athens of the North, outside Holyrood Palace, where John Knox and Mary Queen of Scots had ding dong arguments about religion without ending up with a non crime hate incident or whatever it's called. Well, I'm really glad to see so many people here. Free speech was obviously well loved. Free speech will be missed. 
In fact, I am hoping that free speech is not going to stay dead for long. I am hoping for a resurrection for free speech on this. And when that happens, the April Fool will be Hamza Yusuf and all the MSPs who supported this hate crime bill. The Scottish Parliament behind me was meant to give Scots a voice. Now they are trying to silence us. Hamza Yusuf likes to paint himself as a progressive, but he's taking Scotland back to the dark ages of witch hunts. And just like witch hunts tended to target women, I believe women will be targeted by this pernicious hate crime bill. Yeah. Women like me, women who are just going on to social media and maybe retweeting a few things that they like or sharing something on Facebook. We are going to be targeted. It will be weaponized against us to target us and silence us. Amen. Scotland will no longer be able to call itself a democracy when free speech is dead and half the population has been silenced. I was brought up to respect and trust the police and to believe that they would help me if I needed them. Now I fear a knock at the door because of something I've retweeted. That is sad. That is sad. I don't blame the police. I blame the SNP for politicising them. I blame Thompson. I blame Thompson for eroding our trust in the police and turning them into the thought police. I also blame Hamza for creating division in Scottish society. This will set children against children, as we've already heard. Yeah. Children against parents, friends against friends, yeah. colleagues yeah. against colleagues. But this sleeps chapter of Hamza's. Yeah. We're not even safe from this horrible bill in our own homes. Yeah. Although I tell you, if I invite somebody for dinner, and then they don't be into the police, they'll not be getting another invite. Yeah. But this is not my Scotland, ladies and gentlemen. It's not the Scotland I recognise. It's not the Scotland I grew up in. It's not the Scotland I want to see going forward. I am not prepared to have anyone tell me what I can and cannot see. <laughs> It's sad that I had to do this in a way, but I have joined the Free Speech Union. And I would encourage you to do the same because there's strength in numbers. Together we will resist this hateful, divisive attack on our rights. Hobbs this hate crime bill needs to get in the bin. <laughs> Thank God for a real woman, eh? What is a woman? It's an adult female, isn't it? But they all struggle to answer that question. Well, I think we've just seen a real woman, haven't we? She's oh. got a womb. A woman kitchen, eh? That's, that's what we like. Our next speaker, I'm proud to tell, it, to tell you he's my friend. But also a colleague is the chairman of the Scottish Family Party. A warm welcome to Leo Lohan. Hello, everyone. You know, it wasn't just the SNP. You've got the Greens, the Liberal Democrats, the Labour. They all voted for us. They all voted for us. I think we need a song. Why, oh, why, oh, sir? Why, oh, why, oh, sir? Why, oh, why, oh, sir? Go on with that song in your heart. Why, oh, why? You know, 
One of the great things we have in Scotland, though, is the regional list. And they've put the Greens into the Parliament time and time again with a very small percentage of the vote. They've never won a constituency. But now they've got that influence in the Parliament. We need parties in the Parliament who are going to come into the Parliament and repeal this legislation. Yeah. You have, you have, no, we have, we have, unfortunately, many, many people, they go out and they vote for the same party time and time again, or they like their local candidate. But that local candidate is supporting a party that brings in hate crime laws. That's what's happening. Kate, Kate Forbes remains in the SNP, but presents herself as conservative. It's not acceptable. You have the opportunity to vote in the future for new parties, one of which is the Scottish Family Party. So I urge you to look closely at your alternatives. Don't just do the same thing again and then complain later on about things like the hate crime bill. Indeed. So why, oh, why? Why, oh, why, Hamza? Well, it's to serve his own interest. It's to serve division, division in Scotland. That's what it serves. You won't have that. You want our children to be educated in fact and in truth, not in lies. Thanks for your support today. Thanks for supporting us. We've got a general election coming up. No prizes for who's going to get an absolute stopping in the general election. This government's coming down. It's coming down in instalments, unfortunately. We're going to have to wait for the Scottish Parliament to meet for an election the year after. But it's being dealt with. And judging by this turnout and your response, this is just the beginning of the council. I'm looking forward to hearing from a man called John Watt. Here we have John Watt here. Or am I going to say, what on earth? He's not here. So I'm looking for a David Scott. David Scott. He's going to step up. A warm welcome for David. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are gathered here to mourn the passing of freedom in our land. We cannot know how the new hate crime bill will be applied, nor can we know exactly who will be targeted first. For that is the way of the total state. Pastor Martin Naimola knew this when he wrote the poem First They Came For. The UK Supreme Court, when striking down another SNP attack on liberty, their creepy Orwellian child-watching scheme named person, also knew this. For they said the first thing that a totalitarian regime tries to do is to get at the children, to distance them from the subversive varied influence of their families and indoctrinate them in their rulers' view of the world. So who will our politicised police and institutionally corrupt Crown Office come after first? It could be any of us. It could be a man who might call a politician a name. It could be a children's author who might call a biological male a man. It could be the owner of a nursery school who refuses a place for the child of the politically powerful. That's the thing with the fascist system. You never know who will be the target, so everyone feels the fear, and many become informers. This is the... I'm sorry. In times characterised by wisdom, the law was a simple thing. It can reside in the human heart and can be expressed in a few words. 
Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and all thy soul and all thy might. And love your neighbor as yourself. But Hamza's new law is mysterious. It's unknowable. It's unpredictable. It will be used to indoctrinate our people into our rulers' view of the world. And when our rulers talk grand eloquently of their values, remember this means the resentful, narrow, materialistic and bitter worldview, the ideology that they demand that we, that we swear fealty to. And why do they do this? Because they hate our nation. Because a nation is like a family. It has a strength to encompass differences. It understands patience and love and loyalty and duty. It inspires courage and it grants dignity. It does not do this by means of imposing uniformity, nor by controlling thought or manipulating emotions or generating fear. Rather, it inspires a voluntary and loving commitment of each individual man and woman. Humza cannot inspire. Instead, he imposes, he coerces, he bullies, he threatens. And that is what the hate crime bill is, a means of coercion, a means of silencing dissent using the police. The bill exists because its author's ideas are corrupt and they seek darkness to cover their evil. The truth is to be criminalized. Honesty is to be outlawed and thought is to be suppressed. Ladies and gentlemen, our law has fallen into the long sleep. Let not our hearts do likewise. Let us resist. We can do this in many simple ways. We can never miss an opportunity to tell the truth. We can always and everywhere reject lies. We can decide not to live in fear, and we can love one another. If we do this, we can yet make the evil represented by this pernicious law irrelevant. But the simple step of choosing a better law of our own, free will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to take every opportunity, haven't we, to let them know where we stand. We're not just one or two, are we? We're not even just one or two hundred. Goodness me, this is a wonderful crowd. And may our voice always be loud and clear. We're not accepting this. We're not accepting this. Here's something I want to share with you before I get a dear friend of mine, Gareth. I'm the Deputy Chairman of the Scottish Family Party to address us for a few moments. We have the truth on our side. And the good book says this. If you've got the truth, the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. A warm welcome to Gareth as he steps forward to speak loud and clear. Thank you very much. As you might have noticed, Richard isn't here at the moment, uh, the leader of the Scottish Family Party. Um, he's out doing what the Scottish, Scottish Family Party would have you do most, and that's spend time with family. And that's where we should be, spending time with family. But no, we are here demonstrating against this hate crime act. And, and I think it's not because we want to. It's because we absolutely have to. The Scottish Family Party. The Scottish Family Party. Oh, sorry. Hello. That's much louder. Right. So the Scottish Family Party, for us, what are the key things is family? And we think that the Scottish this act is actually not supporting any families. It's not supporting you. It's not supporting anyone who's actually going to be uh, used by it. Who it is supporting is going to be these minorities who are actually going to be 
uh, the, the radicals and the extremists. They're going to use this as a weapon against the average everyday person, the yous and the me's, those who are interested in protecting our families and our children. We won't let them. And so when we see the Scottish Family Party, we say, um, when we see Richard Lucas has already had one of these against them. He's had it against them just because of his view of family. And that's the same view that this entire society was built on. It's the view that the ideal for a child is to have a mum and a dad. And he's already had a hate incident recorded by the police. And the problem is the police didn't ask what his opinion was. They didn't ask for his version of the statement. They asked for one person's view. And that's the problem we have. There's no appeal. There is simply one person's view. And it's not going to be your view. It's going to be the view of the person who is going to, the radical or the extremist used against you. That is the only view that counts. You see, the SNP, they are not an extremist political party. This is an extremist political policy. And there are more coming. If you think there's only one, they are just warming up. So I tell you now that this extreme political party, if you're thinking you're going to get independence, it will not be through the SNP. It will be through another party, not through an extreme party. And so I can tell you now that I have uh, one thing to say. Mene, mene, tekele parson. The kingdom is divided and shall not stand. I, I leave with this closing comment. The SNP days are numbered. Thank you very much. What on earth? We found John Watt. How about that? Let's hear what John has to say. And uh, let's hear let's hear him speak the truth and be set free. We sound in Scotland. Come in here, know my story. Come in here, know about my story in regards to what happened to me and the people of Scotland. My name is John Moore, and I'm one of the vaccine injured in this country. And this government has killed myself and the people of this country. The people of Scotland. They took the vaccine and have been left to rot. So I have been in an I've been in that building. I've been kicked down at a six month ban. I was 50 feet for this entire. Did I hear anything? Nothing. This government is failing every single one of us. We all have a duty of care to look after Scotland and the people of Scotland. Don't be near. Hands are useless. It's boring. The mainstream media are failing us. It's Scotland are failing us. The broken and long as this goes on, I'm beginning to think, how do you become a politician? Because oh. all you need is a good heart and a moral compass. Oh. Fuck your head, speech. <laughs> this is our flag. This is our satire. What you want is the same thing right now. So it's gone. I can't help you think of what it is. Do not be afraid. Do not be down. Because I know what Scotland's all about. I'm just thinking of what it is. Bring the fucking noise. As a, as a pastor of a of a Christian church, let's just bring the noise, eh? Let's just bring the, any any children here, we apologise, but... You feel the passion, don't you? It gets to you, doesn't it? It's infectious. Wow. Now I have another young lady to listen to. 
And I want you to give a warm welcome to Penny Lewis. I'm a member of the Free Speech Union. I'm a member of Academics for Academic Freedom. And I'm a member of the Scottish Union for Education. I'm currently a member of other organisations as well. I urge everyone here today to link up with the organisations that are here to think about how we can change the culture in Scotland today. There's no doubt that the Hate Crime Act is a spectacular attack on our liberties. It comes on the back of a whole series of really bad laws, restrictions on what parents can do in the home, the name contracts, laws and policies to stop us travelling into cities, and a whole range of other ridiculous policies that involve telling us what we should think and what we should say. On the positive side, it's great to see so many people here today. It's great to come to an event, which is a little scary because you don't know quite how it's going to come out, and to find that you're surrounded by people that feel the same way that you do. It's a bit like going to the movies, but you can talk to the people beside you. You can get that sense that you're not a stranger in your own country. And I'm feeling this thing here today, despite the rain and despite the cold, and it's quite an unfamiliar thing. But you know what it is? It is freedom. This is freedom. It's hateful in the genuine sense, not in the sense that we going around our, our business expressing our opinions are hateful, but that it's a hateful attitude towards ordinary people. And it's a hateful attitude towards the possibility of public discussion. I'm old enough to remember a time when people didn't look at everyone outside their family or their church as a stranger, when people had a spontaneous sense of solidarity with those that lived around us and those that shared our values. We assumed that people were innocent until they were proved guilty 
and we had a completely different attitude towards our peers, even when we didn't agree with them. Governments have encouraged us to look at each other with suspicion, and this legislation is the icing on the cake in this policy that wants us to take sides against each other. It's time for us to start to practice freedom and practice democracy. We've all got a little bit of muscle memory. We remember those of us that are over 50, what it was like to live in a world where you didn't assume everybody else was a problem. And now we need to exercise that muscle memory. We need to start practicing democracy, speaking, listening, and getting together to say we won't take this. Thank you, Penny. Let's make a promise to each other today. Are we prepared to go to jail for this? If you're not in jail with me, I want you to promise me you'll come and visit me. Let's visit one another. Let's inspire one another. Let's pay the price until the tide turns. Another great speaker for you to listen to for the next few moments. A warm welcome for Craig Houston, a new sensation on YouTube, a fantastic researcher, and he has lots of interesting analysis of the Scottish government. Oh. First of all, just thank uh, Glasgow Cabby, not only for organising this, but uh, asking me to come along and speak to you today. So we're here because we hate. What is hate? Hate is an emotion, and although we can influence our own emotions, they're most often created by the actions of others. So now we have emotion laws. Having a society of zero hate is noble, but impractical. Society must allow some hate. The pretense that we can eradicate hate from society would require us not to hate someone who steals from us, abuses us, or kills our own. Although this may be possible for the most pious among us, it's not practical for all. Therefore, society must decide when hate is justifiable and when it is not. This magical line cannot be forced upon society for a small number in this building. Society must set the benchmark, not some who are sitting in power with around as little as a thousand votes in this building. The Scottish public are not stupid. We are capable of knowing right from wrong. We are capable of drawing our own morals. We are capable of setting our society's moral compass. By creating these laws, we have not only put in danger as all of breaking the law by thought or emotion, but they've also removed society from moulding society. For over 500 years, the people of Scotland coped quite well in forming common law. We did not need to... We did not need the people in this building. We did not need the people in this building to build a system of law that's respected and replicated the world over. Their job is to serve us. We are not to be brown beaten by them. We are not their subjects. They are our servants. They must believe, they must stop acting, sorry, like the single state they believe they are after 17 years of power. Your time is up. If the people in this building had their way, we would also be subjected to the Name Person Act and the Gender Recognition Bill. Our children would not be ours and our children would not be safe. The progressive laws they believe they have attempted to push through Parliament are not progressive. They are regressive. The desire to protect the interests of those perceived to be persecuted and minorities is righteous. But when they seek to prosecute and quash the majority and totally ignore women, then that is not how society is approved. This is how society is divided. 
We've seen 17 years of division. We've seen 17 years of ruining Scotland. And in 17 years, we have seen enough. Enough is enough. I'm calling all Scots, not just unionists, but like me, but all of us, to unite in a fight to remove this excuse of a party from both our parliaments, to rid Scotland of those who have ruined the country for unionists and also ruined the possibility of independence for nationalists. If we can all bend our political differences for one Westminster election and one Holyrood election by tactically voting, we can not only rid Scotland of the SNP, but we could render this morally bankrupt party financially bankrupt. We have the power to remove them, and we actually have the power to destroy them. Do not be shy of this aim of destroying them. For that, my friend, would give Scotland real freedom. Not a Hollywood face-painted unicorn freedom delivered with an Australian accent, but proper, proper grown-up freedom. And a parliament with big boy pants on. We could take the powers we do have and build a better Scotland for us all. Instead of blaming others for their failings and the powers that they don't have, we can then accept responsibility to improve Scotland by embracing the powers we definitely have. For those 17 years, those who have controlled this building and represented us in Westminster have blamed Westminster, they blame Brexit, they blame Tories, they blame Labour. The truth, however, Colin Beatty, Mary Black, Ian Blackford, Keith Brown, James Dornan, Stephen Flynn, Patrick Grady, Jamie Hepburn, John Mason, Michael Matheson, Christina McElvey. Was that many of them? I've lost my way. Gavin Newlands, Anun Kazar, Angus Robertson, Shona Robinson, Tommy Shepard, Alan Smith, John Swinney, Alison Hewlett, Peter Wishart, and my own favourite too, Nicola Sturgeon. And Hamza Yusuf. The blame lies squarely with you. Mark Twain once said, we all have the thoughts that should shame the devil. The SNP now want us punished for them, while their acts would shame the government of hell. Enough is enough. Yeah. If I am to be arrested for hating you, so won't it be. Thank you. Enough is enough. Hey. <laughs> grown up government. That's what we want. Well done, Craig. That was fantastic. Well, from one pastor who uh, is, is causing a stir here and gladly doing it, me, to another pastor who is a prophet for our time. Watch these pastors, by the way. They're trouble. Pastor Arthur O'Malley, a warm welcome for the pastor of Eastgate Church in Eldersley. Well, hello, it's good to be back here in Edinburgh amongst the people of Scotland. You know, the Bible says evil triumphs when good people do nothing. It's time for us to take a stand, and I'm just grateful for all of you who have taken the time and trouble to come here, that we have recognised that these new hate crime laws that they have brought in today are actually going to be used against us to suppress us, to stifle us from our conversations. fear you. You're scared to say anything in case someone might object to it. I had a conversation with a lady on the railway, and she walks in and she says, I'm so, I don't know how to address people these days. They're having babies now in hospital. And they're saying, instead of saying you've got a boy and a girl, they say, here is your baby, in case someone is offended. What kind of world are we living in? And what kind of Scotland are we being subjected to? I'm very privileged to stand here on behalf of the church, and I want to call the church out a little bit today. Many ministers are actually the writing is on the wall, and this place should be flooded with ministers and with Christians, realizing that our free speech is under attack, and the gospel itself is very much being attacked. You know, when John the Baptist came, 
out of the wilderness. His first words were, repent, for the kingdom of God has come. And when Jesus came and started his ministry, he says, repent, for the kingdom of God has come. Now that word repent will become the biggest hate word that this government is going to hunt. Because you're not allowed to say to anybody to repent, which means to change your ways. That means to reform your ways. To means become a better person. That's what Jesus came to do, to make the world a better place. Unfortunately, the world has chosen to reject him. Hence the reason we're seeing all the crime and wickedness and evil today. But we need to take a stand, brethren. And therefore I thank Steph, the Glasgow cabbie, and the Scottish Family Party for giving an opportunity to ask me to come and to address this. I will start with an apology for the state of the church in Scotland. We once were a strong voice for our people, but their voice now has been dumbed down. They have fallen down. They have not rose up and been the voice they should have been. They've become people pleasers. Should I say government pleasers? And a God pleaser. This Bible now is one that we used to swear on in courts. We used to swear on it because it was the highest order it could have been achieved. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. But this government has chosen. They're working very carefully to demonize any dissenting voices that may have a different opinion other than the point of view that they have directing us. What's a powerful brethren? Language is always used to transmit values, laws, cultural norms, including taboos. Language, since it expresses and reinforces culture, influences the personal identity of those living within the culture and creates boundaries and behaviour. This new hate speech law has a ring of moral goodness attached to it. Let's protect the vulnerable, the innocent we're all for that and for the multitude of broken people within our societies. But well, here's a sting in the tail. It will attack anyone who would disagree with their chosen beliefs and ideologies and their desire to protect minorities with the full force of the law. They inadvertently, or shall I say deliberately, attack the majority of law-abiding citizens. This government and the majority of the major parties in Scotland are determined to change the face of Scotland and destroy our cultural heritage that defines us as a people, the Scots. China has been suppressing its people for a long, long time. You just have to see and look at the model of China. They control all things, the media, the police, law and order, social media. They watch the people all the time. And everybody is scared to say anything, or else the police will be at your door. Is this the road that Scotland has chosen? Is this the road that they are going down? In China's case, we know what they're all about, complete control of its citizens. But what about the Scottish government? Are they going down the same road as China? Are they becoming dictators? No more free speech. Living under the threat that Big Brother is always going to be watching us. Everything we say or even post or someone else might say. Our very actions and every move is constantly monitored on these screens and walls around our cities and towns and places. I want to finish with a poem, or it may have been a song by Robbie Burns, our national poet. And it's Scots Wahe. I'm going to put my glasses on for this. 
I'll do my best to try and pronounce it in the Scottish tongue. I'm a bit hoarse. And it was buns with me. I imagined it. What Robert Bruce before the battle of Bannockburn. Scots were he, we Wallace bled. Scots from Bruce has often led. Welcome to your gory bed or to victory. Now's the day and now's the hour. See the front of battle roar. See approach proud Edward's power. Chains and slavery. Why will you be a traitor knave? Why can fill a coward's grave? Why say base as be a slave? Let him turn and flee. What for Scotland's king and law? Freedom's sword will strongly draw. Free man stand and free man fall. Let him follow me. For your oppression's woes and pains. For your sons and several chains. We will drain our deepest veins. But they shall be free. Lay the prejudice up so low. Tyrants fall in every fall. Liberty is in every blow. Let us do or die. Scotland men, let us rise up and defend our children. Defend our women. Defend our bodies. We are a Scottish people. Let us rise up and defend our culture. The man, the black you go. We've got two more speeches for you. But I want to ask you a question before we invite Niall to address us. Hey. Niall Fraser. Is this North Korea? Let me hear that again. Is this North Korea? Is this China? Is this Afghanistan? Is it Russia? This is Scotland! I need to free Scotland! A free Scotland. That's what makes us different. This is what's going to shine through in the end. Well, welcome to another dear friend of mine, Niall Fraser. It's come to warm your hearts up. Hello, can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Hello, and welcome to the funeral for free speech, guys. We're minus a coffin, though. It broke down on the way here on the M8. So there's a hearse halfway along the M8 at Hart Hill looking for uh, the A. So thanks for coming. It really does mean the world to me, guys. It really does. Uh, it shows me that righteousness isn't quite dead in Scotland. And before we properly start, I just wanted to say that I didn't bring you this. The Glasgow Cabbie didn't bring you this. The Scottish Family Party didn't bring you this. The people who work in that building behind us brought us this. Everyone here, I think, understands the importance of a day like this. A moment in time, never to come again. A brief second where we all collectively share the feeling of loss. We're all shouldering the pain in unison. Tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what do you feel? Grief. Pain. Despair. Well, I'll tell you what I'm feeling. It's betrayal. Betrayed by a government that's supposed to have our best interests at heart. Betrayed by a government that's supposed to be working up for us. If you can believe that. Betrayed by a government that's supposed to be made up of our betters. Every single one of the MSPs that voted for this hate crime legislation are so full of their own self-importance they can't see the forest for the trees. They're trying to elite public policy instead of following the public's mandate. And better yet, they're leading us in completely the wrong direction, folks. We used to have mental asylums here, but now we've closed them down. All the patients have become politicians. And the parliaments have become no events. Some of the folk that work in there, I wouldn't take my eye off them, even if they're in a straight jacket. But it's not, it's not all to them in gloom, guys. It's all right. It's not all to them in gloom. 
with the passing of one thing comes brings the coming of another sorry this death today this political assassination of free speech this chainsaw to the legal system has only served to bring us all together here folks that's what it's done scotland's heroes of old are looking down on us today today filling their hearts with strength to succeed the strength to overcome this evil Hamza Yusuf. If Hamza Yusuf thinks that he can just murder free speech and leave his body in the gar and we won't react, he's got another thing coming. We've reacted in exactly the way we should have done. We've come together over this. It's this unification that spells doom for the SNP and spells doom for these MSPs and their green minions. It's this unification, this coming together that brings a brighter tomorrow, a brighter Scotland. We do not need to live in fear anymore. We do not need to live in the shadows anymore, folks. I will not allow my son to be born into a place where his thoughts and speech are policed. It's never going to happen. And you can see there's some police kicking about. And this one's directed at you. Is this what you signed up for? Am I naive in thinking that the police want to protect their communities? Am I, am I not even thinking that? Do you really want to be Hamza's dogs? Sect on people accused of wrong think. I don't think so. Folks, for me it all comes down to how we will be remembered. This life is a huge cosmic test and I intend on passing that test. How would you like to be remembered? Everyone here, would you like to be remembered as the righteous soul fighting back against tyranny? Would you like to be remembered as the person who made that difference? The person who turned Scotland back for the bank? How you would like to be remembered, folks, is entirely up to you. Now, we've got a lot of amazing speakers after, well, I thought I was going to be in the middle of it at the end, but we've got two male speakers after me. I'm not going to take too much more of your time. But with this being a funeral, I wanted to give uh, a poem again. And just like Afro O'Malley, it's for the, one of the greatest sons in Scotland, Robert Burns. An honest man, here lies at rest, as their God with his image blessed. The friend of man, the friend of truth, few hearts like his. Um, oh, we'll again. I've, I've, I've read it already. We'll start again. We'll start again. An honest man here lies at rest, as their God with his image blessed. The friend of man, the friend of truth, the friend of age and guide of youth. Few hearts like his with virtue warmed, few heads with knowledge so informed. If there's another world, he lives in bliss. If there is none, then he made the best of this. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. You have all passed the cosmic test. Everyone here can meet their maker with a smile. Happy in the knowledge that you fought on the side of truth and liberty. You fought, you fought on the side of righteousness. Thank you all. Don't shoot me. I'm going to thank Hamza Yusuf. Don't shoot me. Why would I thank him? Because it's because of him we're all here. I've never been hardly any of you. But how heartened am I today that there's a lot more than a few dozen who are prepared to stand up for truth and for liberty. So thank you, Hamza. You poked the bear and the bear is growling. Hallelujah. Let's let's get um, Alan, Alan the Miller, to speak just before uh, we hear from the Glasgow cabbie to conclude things here today. Thank you, Alan. 
Thank you very much. Thank you to the Glasgow cabbie. And well done, everyone, for being here. This is a historic moment. My name is Alan Miller. I'm a co-founder of the Together Association. We have hundreds of thousands of supporters around the country. And we're here to say that we all support this fight for freedom with all of you together. And what we think we should do is go out and win out all our friends and colleagues and neighbours and the people that we work with and have these conversations and get them involved. We should remember that in this cradle of the Enlightenment, this place where people like Donald Robertson, who taught James Madison, who enshrined, enshrined free speech in the Constitution, who created the very foundation of America with the idea of liberty, free speech and free expression, that these hundreds of years later, we're not going to allow the people in there to suffocate it and squash it out. Now, my accent, my accent might be a bit different, but I stand shoulder to shoulder with everyone here. You have hundreds of thousands of supporters. And I'm going to keep it short, but just know that we're stronger together. Let's stand together and take back democracy together. What are we going to do, everyone? Thank you very much. Let's stand together, let's beat these people, and let's make Scotland free together. Do not think for a moment this is going to be an easy fight. Do not think for a moment that this is going to be a walk in the park. This is going to, this is going to be a sore one. But we're prepared to pay the price. And I want this, I want this crowd here to know that there's someone else here who's going to conclude things. The Glasgow cabbie, who's paid a price for standing up. We want to encourage him, and thank him for organising this today. Thank you, Glasgow Cabby. Yeah. Another warm welcome in conclusion to the Glasgow Cabby. Listen, thanks a lot, and thanks very much to all of our speakers here. You've been wonderful. There's been a lot, quite a bit of planning um, in this. And um, there's a lot to be learned here today. Uh, we're delighted with the turnout. For all the weather has been miserable. Um, you stand there with both your salt tires, which I love. They do not belong to the SNP. They belong to Scotland. Also, let's to see that Union flag. And seeing there's been a bit of poetry here today. I'm going to write a wee, a recite, a wee poem that I wrote by Nicola Sturgeon when she resigned only five weeks after our gender reforms demonstration here at Holyrood. And it goes like this. It's titled, After a Fish, The Royal Sturgeon. We fin-tailed after Sturgeon like a great white shark in haste, a destroyer of our nation, but we had no time to waste. With her dreams of separation, or then the words she spoke. Kids' books will show in history how her dreams blew up in smoke. We celebrate the union, for together we are strong. When gnats cry themselves to sleep at night, we'll sing joyfully in song. The union flag is flying, in Great Britain we shall pray. As Scots and Saltire, he and do keep us Nazi cult at bay. We can see the country rising, look above, God knows it's true. Standing tall to save our children, the Union Jack, red, white and blue. Thanks once again to all of you. I know an awful lot of you have travelled um, big distances to be here from the top of Scotland, to away past Greenock and um, even some of the Isles. Um, it's marvellous that you should commit yourselves to a day like this, but it's extremely important. And it's also... Uh, Shows an awful lot of people have digs at me on social media uh, about this building behind us being empty today. This is not empty out here. And it was the location that mattered. And it was the fact that these laws are being enforced on this day, April Fool's Day. Like I said earlier, you just couldn't make it up. Anybody at all that collected a, a banner from me, um, if you don't mind, um, Charlene there is going to take them from you and we're going to place them behind you. They're not my banners. 
and um, I'm delighted. Thanks once again to each and every individual that's come along here, all at the back, all at the front, and just everyone. Absolutely amazing turnout. Thank you. Thank you. Just leaves me to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Any banners that you want displayed, we're going to take a photo. All banners behind me, and then those with cameras can take a picture from in front of me. You want your banner displayed, flags, you name it, you can get behind me, and we'll have a big, crazy group photo. I'll leave you with one Bible verse. If God be for us, who can be against us? Coralie, good to see you. I'm still alive. Oh, wow. 
The steps just pulled pull over it. You know, oh, yeah. but it's just the cameras behind me, so make sure they're it's for them to see. Live stream. Folks, this is this has been a really good live stream. We have had over five thousand people watching. Uh, people from a broad variety of points of view, from unionist points of view to also the some Scottish nationalists as well. Sorry. And uh, this has been brought to you by our organization, A Force for Good. The, the live stream has been brought to you by A Force for Good. If you haven't heard of us before, Please do give us a like. Please do give us a follow on our Twitter and on our YouTube and on our Facebook as well, please. And do give us a share also.
get Tums out, well, there'll be a chance to do there'll be a chance to do damage to the main parties, including the SNP, at the upcoming general election, and also, of course, at the Scottish election, which isn't until May twenty twenty six. But until then, we're going to have Humza with his Stasi hat on, giving us his glare, and uh, making sure that he tries to imprison as many people as possible. Hey. It's all right. Is it what's out? You better check it. Okay, folks, just speaking to some friends there. So Do give us uh, a follow, folks. And if you want to contact us, we're at contact at a force for good dot UK. We broadcast every Wednesday night a live program on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube called Good Evening Britain. That's from 7 to 8 every night. Uh, sorry, every Wednesday night. And... Um, Also, sign up to be kept in touch with what we're doing at aforceforgood.uk forward slash sign hyphen up. Here we go. This is the funeral for the death of free speech. That is... Free speech is being momentarily laid to rest, but we know what happens certainly at this Easter weekend. It will be resurrected in Scotland. Sorry. Sorry. 
Almost. I see they're trying to ban you again. Are they? They're, 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 they're non authoritarian way that they're seeing to be going to ban everybody else that they're doing jail. Well, you know what? The situations are all down for five years. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you know, The only chance to have is to have Okay, folks, we are, are just going to wind down now, and it's been a great day. Thank you to everybody who's been watching, and we are going to, we're going to say goodbye. We've got 5,833 watching at the moment. This has been the, this has been the free speech, the free speech rally and the protest against Hamza's hate speech Scotland Act very well attended it's made an impact and thousands of people have been viewing so great stuff folks we're going to end this but please give our organization a follow we're at a forceforgood.uk forward slash 
sign hyphen up. Please do that, folks, and you'll be kept in touch with everything that we are doing on this. But until then, folks, I bid you farewell. God bless the United Kingdom and God save the King. All the very best.